the sense in which we are doing this over a number of years so that you get a body of work. And that's exactly what Catholic social teaching is. It's a body of encyclicals. It's a whole body of teaching. It's now part of the living tradition of the church. And that's exactly what I think both the clergy and the laity need to do is to develop that and then to be able to, in some sense, you know, go out and, and tell the world about it and, and, and live it. Because that's what this is ultimately about. This is not about having a fancy conference in Rome, however nice that is. It's about actually inspiring people where they are to, to, to live these practices. Yes, it yeah. is, because I think a think tank on the whole tends to lobby, tends to advocate. This is really two things. This is trying to draw on the best ideas out there, dignity, subsidiarity, solidarity, but also to, to then inspire action. Inspire not just the defense of interest or the promotion of ideology, but actually to inspire people to live these principles in their everyday existence. And that's a much harder thing to do. It's something that we fall short of, but that's the ambition of the foundation, to inspire a business leader actually not to put greed or self-interest first, but to put the common good first, to inspire people in politics to lead by example rather than lead by you know, some form of celebrity cult or you know, whatever else you know, politicians might do. And you know, it's also to inspire everyone to try and live in truth. And of course, truth is very contested and you know, we'll never agree. But even to kind of discard ideas of truth and to say we'll now live in a post-truth world where only opinion matters, I mean, that's a terrible you know, state of affairs. And so if we can encourage people to try and discern the truth together, because no one can ever do this by themselves, you know, and, to, and to act like this, then I think that can make a contribution. It's incredibly hard, but that's what's so fascinating about the world. I think the first thing to say is, you know, digitization is not just about a technology that affects a job or the market. It affects market, state, society, culture, everything. The very understanding of life. And that's what's, I think, so fundamental now. And really, I think what's striking is that the stakes are so high now. We're no longer dealing in just in the realm of policy. No policy fix is going to deal with the problems that confront us. So we need much better principles and much better practices to try and come to grips with some of this. Because technology raises now questions about who we are as human beings, who we are as citizens. And if we can't provide some meaningful answers you know, and do this together wherever we live, then we're going to really struggle to hold together society that is about the person, that is about flourishing, that is about the common good. And I think that's why you know, it's very exciting but also very daunting because we haven't confronted such challenges for some time. I think so. I think he has incredible moral authority and there's very few people or institutions or leaders about you know, whom we can say that. And he's got moral authority because he's very authentic. You know, he doesn't deal in slogans. He doesn't deal in, in mottos. You know, he, he says something you can feel. Not only does he mean it, but he tries to live by this. And he's not being moralistic, which is very powerful because most people, when they say anything as they sound moralistic. They tell other people how to behave. That's not what the Pope does. The Pope always says this is about trying to live our humanity, to be respectful of others, of you know, the natural world of which we are a part. And so he's not telling people, you should do X or Y, I'm going to judge you. you know, as as you know, was famously uh, you know, said, you know, who, who am I to judge you? So this is not about moralism. This is about trying to be essentially faithful to the teachings of the church, to this great gift of which Catholic social teaching is a big part, and to say, I'm going to try and live a virtuous life. I will fail. I'm a sinner, like, like, like everyone else. But in my sort of witness, you know, in my witness to this faith that I have, I will try and inspire others, and I will try and take the church with me. And the church isn't just what the clergy, you know, think or say or do. It's, it's, it's all of us. And this church is very much in the world, and this church is open to all including to non-believers or people of other faiths, because this church has a universal message. And again, which leader or which institution can say they have a truly universal message that at the same time resonates in very particular ways to people you know, where they are?